So um, we are here today with ISTE President and Innovation Coordinator for Parkway Schools, Bill Bass, who along with uh, Shannon Miller wrote this book, Leading from the Library, Help Your School Community Thrive in the Digital Age. And Victoria and I just wanted to ask uh, Bill a few questions about his book. So um, first of all, Bill, just kind of curious um, how this book came about and, and why you think it's important. So Shannon and I have been, um, Shannon and I met about 10 years ago as we were at ISTE, at an ISTE conference. And um, since then, we've done various projects together and all that. And we have been talking together at different conferences and stuff about the uh, about Future Ready and the Future Ready framework. And, and so that's really what this came out of. It was thinking about, you know, of all the spokes on the wheel, what are the things that are probably um, the, the highest need areas? And, and the things that, you know, like librarians can, that we can actually make an impact with libraries around. And so one of those things, um, pretty quickly became the le leading from the library as one of the, you know, as the, one of the spokes and under the collaborative leadership. And so when we were, when we started talking um, more about it, you know, we, Shannon had been thinking about a book around this, but she wanted to be sure that it wasn't just the voice of library, but it was about the partnership between um, administrator and librarian. And so that's really where our, our partnership around this particular book came from was that um, was you know as, as I run our library program I'm the administrator in uh, responsible for our library program and we were looking to get you know at how we can make an impact and what kind of partnerships really do exist and and uh, and can be fostered inside of libraries because that's one of that's that's really what this entire book is about it's about about leadership and empowering um, librarians to be leaders in their communities. I noticed um, as I just glanced through, I haven't had a chance to read the whole book yet because mine just arrived today, but I am planning um, to have all the librarians in our district read the book and I'm very excited about it. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the equity piece because just sure. glancing through, I see a lot of that and I know that's something that concerns people ac really across the country. Um, yeah, e equity is equity is one of those things that is, you know, it, it's certainly a buzzword now, you know, like there's a lot of, you go to a conference and you see lots of equity sessions. But um, when we talk about it from the library, we talk about, when we talk about equity, a lot of times in library, we talk about, um, we talk about in terms of access. And sometimes that's access to information, sometimes that's access to devices, sometimes that's access to the internet at home. The students may not have the internet available to them. Um, but what we tried to do in, in the book is expand what we think about when we think about equity. So, right, you have this, you ha these are certainly, you know, the hardware that the information equity is of utmost importance. And you know what? Strides are being made. Like we are, we are, we are on the path, right? But when it comes to um, other types of equity, we really have to think about what our influence in libraries are around and, and what kind of impact we can make. So we, in, in the book, we talk about it in three different ways. We certainly talk about it in terms of access, but we also talk about it in terms of content and the intentional decisions we made around content because those are equity decisions. If we do not have, um, if we do not have a collection that looks, that um, reflects who our community is, that's an equity issue. If we do not have, um, Digital content, you know, our digital content is as important and that collection is as important as our physical contact or our physical collection. Like what are those, what are those content things? And then the last one is equity of experience. And we took this idea of equity experience um, or the language for that from the Department of Education's tech plan um, that came out a few years ago. And in that, you know, when we talk about equity of experience, you know, as well as I do, it matters a great deal um, who any individual student has as to what their experience is going to be in digital spaces, right? Whether that's digital content or whether that's just using a computer or accessing things like, you know, on, online tools, like it matters a great deal. And so when we talk about equity of access 
or equity of experience, what we're talking about is how do we be sure that all kids have those experiences, not the same experience, but an experience or multiple experiences using digital tools, multiple experiences using digital content, and the, the combination of the two of them together um, forming, forming one thing. And that's what we talk about when we talk about equity of experience. It's the experience that we are asking teachers and librarians to intentionally design so that kids are finding their way, right, and, and having those experiences. And we think that the librarian, because of their influence on their building, has a great deal of um, responsibility, certainly, but also ability to affect change inside of their schools and really make a, make a dent on equity and the impact that equity has, you know, th that experience has for kids as they're going forward in whatever is next for them. We want to be sure that they have, um, that they're prepared for those next things regardless of what they are and, and those are things we can't really even predict at this point. Yeah, you know, the action research I did um, in my library uh, around digital equity uh, really supports what you're saying, Bill, um, in the, especially thinking about like which kids are given opportunities to be content creators and which are only consumers of technology um, and that often um, is an economic barrier. Yeah. So um, thank you for you know, putting that in the book and, and giving emphasis to that idea of the equity of experience that librarians can provide. Um, so when you came and talked to us about uh, libraries and librarians um, at our Greater St. Louis meeting recently, you said that libraries are the key to digital transformation. Can you talk a little bit about why you see libraries as such a key for digital transformation? Certainly. I think that, um, I, th I think there's a, there's a couple of things that come into play. First of all, um, when we're talking about digital transformation, this is, it's kind of a new area, right? I mean, we've, we've, even though like in 2019, we're moving on to 2020 rapidly. And, you know, I remember thinking about that and thinking about how long away that was. But um, the digital, when we talk about a digital transformation, the fact is, is that librarians have a unique view of their community. Um, because they don't have necessarily, um, like every kid, every person who comes into their school is a potential patron, right? It's not just the kids who happen to be assigned to them. Um, it's, it's every kid. And there's, and there's a unique um, opportunity that comes with that. So I think that there's, there's that. And when we talk, think about it in terms of digital transformation, it really does go back to that equity of experience. And it really does go back to the idea that um, we want kids to be able to, you know, we're preparing them for, for whatever they need to do. And that means we have to give them opportunities to make decisions in digital spaces. Um, and that also means we have to give them opportunities to screw up in digital spaces and make mistakes and, and learn from those mistakes and not, you know, as soon as something happens, like pull all their technology back from them because we're scared about what's going to happen. Um, that's part of it. Like that's part of the learning process. And what's interesting about the world of library and why I think it's really the key to this is that um, librarians have such influence on the programming and the things that go on in their building. There's research that talks about how literacy um, scores go up based on a full-time librarian and library programs. There's um, other research around the, the PD that librarians provide that give, um, that basically empower teachers to try new things and um, to take risks in digital spaces. And um, there's a safety that comes in library programs um, and a connection with literature and text and um, experiences that kids can have through library. And so when we think about you know, this shift to digital, First of all, um, you know, one of, the, one of the biggest things that we have or one of the biggest needs that we have is this information literacy, right? And just being able to tell what's real and what's, um, what's fabricated online. And honestly, like librarians have been doing that for years um, and understand it better than anyone. When we think about curation, organization and understanding how to find and search and, and um, discover inside of 
content. You know, those are skills that librarians have been teaching for years and years and years. And so making that shift to digital, now let's be, let's be fair, inside of our library programs, we have to be willing to do that too. We have to be willing to take the leap and we have to be willing to, um, to be the one who allows kids to make mistakes. We have to be able to be the one to um, extol, you know, like privacy and those kind of concerns that, that, that we need to pay attention to for kids. Um, so part of it's on us, you know, we have, to, we have to be willing to make that leap. But at the same time, um, we are also best positioned to make that leap because in a lot of cases, you know, the technology has been part of a lot of library programs for years. And so the shift is, well, you know, we talk about it in terms of a shift, it's not that big of a shift for librarians and we can lead through that. And that's really what, you know, we talk about when we, when we are lead, talk about this book. It's, it's about leadership and harnessing that leadership and um, taking responsibility for the leadership that that we have available to us. And that, that's a big piece of when it comes to um, that digital transformation is it's not just, you know, the fact that this is offered up to us, you know, but it's the taking of that and the accepting of what is being offered as, as a part of this digital world and the opportunities that come with that. And we're in a unique position in library programs to, to really take advantage and really, um, really bring that to kids. And, and that's what's really most important about it. You know, we, we bring that to kids through teachers, but we also bring that directly to kids. And those are, those are, big, um, those are big giant things that, that we can do that not a lot of other groups you know, like big groups um, have that ability. One of the things I really liked and, and um, when you spoke to our regional organization, and then I also have seen it just um, kind of perusing through the book is that this idea that we shouldn't be waiting for permission to become leaders. Right. That leadership is something that we already have within us and we need to just yeah. kind of um, promoting that and um, getting the word out there that we can be leaders certain ways, coaching teachers and some of the other, and, you know, working with students, of course, like you talked about. Um, and the chapter called Being a Champion really speaks to that as well. I wondered if you could talk a little bit more about some of the strategies. The quote at the beginning of the chapter is, if you don't tell your story, somebody else will. And that's something I know I have learned from you and also from your colleague, Kim, about yeah specific strategies for librarians? Because I think it's one thing being a leader, but people won't really recognize you as a leader unless you're also out getting the word out that these are the exciting, innovative things that are going on in your library. Yeah, I think one of the, so um, thank you for that. I think that the, um, you know, that, that idea of being a champion is such an important one and you're a champion for all the things. You know, it's not just, it's not just one, piece or another piece. It's you, you are a champion of your kids. Um, and that comes with a lot of, a lot of um, angst. It comes with a lot of responsibility, but it also comes with a lot of opportunity. Um, so, you know, when, when we think about, when I think about the ways that, you know, we, you're, we're a champion, really this chapter is really about advocacy. It's about advocacy, advocating for a number of different things. First of all, it's about advocating for your program. Because you know we have amazing things happening in the library, and then we keep it a secret. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that's intentional. You know, it's not like oh, we don't want to we don't want to let anybody know. It's that you know, first of all, there's a humility that comes with that. Um, but then there's also the the fact is is that if nobody knows, then you also can't um, you can't advocate for your kids that way. And so one of the things that we that we have done, um, I guess, for the past six years or so. One of the strategies that we use is um, I, I meet with principals all the time as you know as a district administrator and if I can't tell them about something that's happening in their library right now then there's a problem and that's what that means is either nothing's going on in the library right now which I don't believe um, but more importantly is that they haven't communicated it back out to me which means they also haven't communicated it out to their community um, and so we have, and you know, we kind of do it after the fact, we have this end of the year narrative that we ask our, our teachers to do. And it's kind of like an end of the year report. At one point it was our, you know, it was the, um, the state reporting requirements that we would ask everybody all the things that they needed to know. But 
But what it has morphed into is really um, giving them an opportunity to tell their story and highlight the things that they're proud of this year. And then what I do is I read all of them, and then every time I see a, an administrator during the summer, I'm like, hey, did you know, you know, or I, I heard that this is happening in your library. And we encourage them to share that with their administrator too. So that it's not just, it's not just me telling the story, it's not just them telling the story, but their administrator now knows. And really, you know, I think the, I think the most effective way to tell your story in a library is through your kids. Through the kids that are in your program, have them, you know, just do a short video or um, write something or just have them talk, tell their teachers, you know, and encourage them to tell their teachers. Like, don't leave it to chance. Um, and that's really what that, you know, being a champion and, you know, harnessing, like you were saying, taking that leadership opportunity. Um, there's many ways to be a leader. One is positional leadership, um, which in some cases librarians have. But there's also, like, you have to show yourself as a leader, and you have to come with solutions as opposed to um, problems all the time, um, because those are, the, those are the ways that suddenly um, it's, not, it's not someone who just brings up the problems and just brings up the, um, the challenges that they have and, and complains or whatever. But, like, here's this thing that's going on that I've noticed. Here's what we might do about it. Um, it's a great way to do that. And, the, uh, the other piece that, and we talk about this a lot as well, um, Shannon and I do when we're out, when we're out talking, um, you have to know what is important to you. And what that's gonna mean is that you have to say no to good things. Um, there are a lot of great things that are happening in schools and that are happening in libraries that we can't, we can't, say, we can't say yes to everything. Um, and that's because of finances, that's because of time, that's because of, um, you know, in some case schedules, like there's a lot of things that go into that. So you have to prioritize, you have to pick the things that are going to be best. And that's, the things that you say no to are as important as the things that you say yes to. And so you have to be really intentional every time. And so that's where that um, being a champion comes in is because if you are intentional every time, um, you, you have a lot better shot at, at really being effective um, just because you're super busy doesn't mean you're being effective. All it means is you're super busy. So. Yeah, uh, Bill, I loved that that quote from your book and from the talk. Um, and I think that this chapter really does have some great advice on, um, you know, some ways to collect data around what you value and mm -hmm. what you're spending your time on and then making sure that um, you're getting the biggest bang for your buck as far as, um, you know, are, is what you're doing contributing to the overall goals of the school and the district and that that's when you can really start to make a big impact is when yeah. you are, are laser focused in on um, you know the impact of student learning and how it fits into the overall goals of the school and district. Totally. So um, when, so in the foreword, Tom Murray said, this work isn't simply about celebrating great things that do happen. It's about creating the conditions needed for change, advocating for the work, and as librarians, making it happen. Um, so if you were to give just a piece of advice to a librarian that wants to start to be more of a leader in their school, like, like where do you start? You know, how do you how do you start to, to get these conditions and, and make things happen? So I would say two things. I would say, first of all, um, don't wait. You know, like there 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 has to be a sense of urgency to this work, because what it comes down to is, yes, it's going to take a long time. You have to recognize that it's going to take a long time. But the urgency is with the kids that are sitting in front of you right now. So that urgency is of utmost importance, right? Because you don't want to be like, okay, so this is going to take me five years, so I'm writing off these kids. You're not gonna write off these kids. So that's, that's the first thing, like plan with a sense of urgency. And the second thing is really be strategic about this. So if, you are, if you're thinking about that there's something that you want to do in your library and there's something that you want to um, accomplish or you have this goal or you know, whatever that may be, the bottom line is it has to be, it can't just be important to you. It has to be important to other people. And so maybe that's your principal, maybe that's your administrator, maybe that is your teachers, maybe that's your parents or your kids. Like, who's your audience and who, who does this matter to? And so, and how do you tie it to something that matters to them? Because 
it's it's that authenticity and that it's that relevance to the world that um, maybe it's a principal who is trying to you know manage parents and kids and discipline and all these things, and then so why why do they need to care about your makerspace? Like those are those are things that you have to ask, and those are things that you have to be strategic and make the connection because a lot of times what happens, and I see this all the time, we assume that other people will make the connection for us, right? So here we have this makerspace. It's great. Kids are going to be creative, but how does how that ties in? It's hard to say because we haven't really been this. Um, we haven't been intentional about the discrete connection that comes between the work that we want to do and the work that others are currently doing and how those lay over each other. And so um, that strategy and being strategic and intentional about it is one of the two keys that I would say that's where you get started. Figure out what other people's goals are and follow your goals along with them. And that could be, you know, maybe it's building goals that have to do with like your CSIP or, you know, whatever, whatever reporting you have to do for your district, but make sure that your goals align because if they don't align, then what it, what it really means is that they don't, the, the people that you're trying to reach, they don't have to care, right? They, your building principal doesn't have to care if it doesn't align with his goals. So where are you going to go? And that's, and so that's a really important, um, being that strategic connection is a really important thing that um, I would absolutely, you're going to start anywhere, start right there and do it right now. Don't wait. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Bill. I appreciate your time and thank you for donating a copy of your book to one of our uh, viewers uh, and have a great summer. Thank yeah. you so much. Bye-bye.